Now joining us on Politicking is historian and law professor Ian Haney Lopez. His fascinating new book, Dog Whistle Politics, How Coded Racial Appeals Have Reinvented Racism and Wrecked the Middle Class, takes a look at coded messages on race that he says some politicians are using to divide Americans and pander to certain groups. He joins me from Berkeley, California. Thanks for being with us, Ian. Delighted to be here. Explain the title. What are dog whistle politics? We'll start by thinking about terms like illegal alien or inner city crime or even a phrase like take our country back. These are dog whistles. Like a literal dog whistle, on one level they're silent, silent about race. But on another level, they're triggering strong racial reactions. Uh, they're triggering this sort of subliminal fear of uh, immigrants from Mexico or, or further south, of African Americans in the cities, of a sense of panic about demographic change. And what I'm arguing is that politicians are strategically trying to mobilize anxiety among voters as a way of winning votes. Are you? A, you're not a psychologist. No, not a psychologist, uh, uh, but a historian. And I think if we study this historically, we can really see this process at work. We can start with people like Richard Nixon talking about forced busing or states' rights, Ronald Reagan talking about welfare queens, uh, George Bush talking about Willie Horton. There's example after example after example of politicians using these coded terms uh, that, that on their surface, again, on their surface, they don't trigger, they don't s specifically say race. And this allows a level of deniability. These politicians can say, race? Me? I'm not mobilizing racial fear. Not at all. But underneath them, forced busing, welfare queen, the Willie Horton ad with the mugshot of an African-American criminal, these were coded racial appeals, and they worked. And you say it has seduced members of the middle class to vote against their own economic interests. Yeah, but let's put it even more forcefully. These have been coded appeals directed predominantly at white voters. And the message has been this. The message has been not just vote for me as a politician, but the message has been, listen, white voters, when you think about the greatest risk in your life, the greatest threat you face, Focus on minorities, focus on African Americans, focus on Latinos more recently, focus on a Muslim extremist in the heartland, but don't worry about the very rich, about the Koch brothers, about the corporations. In fact, um, uh, vote for tax cuts for the very rich because you can trust them. They've got your back. You need to keep worrying about these poor minorities. That's the politics of dog whistling, and that's how it's come to ruin the middle class. Does the left have any coded messages like uh, wackos and stuff? Sure. So, so we can back off and say dog whistling is a way of talking in coded terms that's targeted at particular audiences. And in that sense, dog whistling is prevalent throughout politics. But what's different here is that the right is using a coded reference that most people would repudiate if they understood. This isn't a sort of a comment on the political ideology of one side or the other. This is a form of racism. This is a way in which politicians are saying to many white voters, you should be afraid of non-whites. Ah. You should fear blacks. And that sort of racism, it's democratically destructive. It's really bad for society to have politicians say, hey, the biggest threat in your lives are non-whites. Fear them. If it appeals to me, does that mean I'm racist? Well, this is really important. As a country, we are coming out of a legacy in which we have been separated by race, and the fears and anxieties among white voters, they're real. That doesn't mean that people are bad people, that they're evil, that we should condemn them. Listen, we all have fears and anxieties. We've all been reared in a society that tells us uh, some people are worthy and some people are not worthy. But what we expect from our leadership is that our leaders help us see that some sorts of fears are, 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 have no basis um, and, in fact, are immoral and in, unjust, and we should get beyond them. But rather than have that sort of leadership, we have instead a political class, a political party, which has dedicated itself to stoking those fears, and that's what's so damaging. 
More with Professor Ian Haney Lopez when we come back from the break. Don't go away. Welcome back with Ian Henry Lopez. I'm talking with this history professor. His newest book is entitled Dog Whistle Politics, How Coded Racial Appeals Have Reinvented Racism and Wrecked the Middle Class. In it, he takes a close look at coded messages on race that he says some politicians are using to divide Americans and pander to certain groups. He's joining us from Berkeley, California. If it's working, how did Obama get elected twice? Obama got elected, but not among whites. And here we really need to pause and, and, and take a hard look at this. Obama uh, uh, only received two out of five white votes in 2012. And this is not just about a black president. No Democratic candidate for president has won a majority of the, black, of the white vote since 1964. This dog whistling has been going on since then, and in these 50 years, no Democratic candidate for president has won a majority of the white vote. And here's a couple of other numbers that we should grapple with. The Republican Party today draws well over 90% of its support from white voters, and 98% of its elected officials are white. This is a hard reality that we as a country are, are, are staring in the face. Our politics is increasingly divided by race. And now it's not to say that race is the only issue, far from it, but race is a central issue. And we won't heal as a democracy until we start grappling with what has happened in terms of how race is being used to divide us politically and socially. When did this change? Because the Republican Party, the party of Lincoln, used yeah. to get shut out in the South. The Democrats, <clears throat> The, the Dixiecrats, they got the, they voted for Democrats, and Democrats got the white vote then in the South. When did it change? It changed in 1963 and 1964, and I'm so glad you asked that, because this really drives home that this is a matter of strategy and not a matter of bigotry among Republicans. So if we look at 1960, um, the population as a whole was pretty evenly divided in terms of the Democratic Party and the Republican Party as to which party was most likely to support civil rights and to help African Americans. But it shifts in 1963, 1964, because that's when Republican leaders realize that there's increasing anxiety among whites generated by the civil rights movement, and they can use that anxiety to begin to peel away votes from the Democratic Party. Now, you're exactly right. At this point in history, if there's a white man's party in the country, it's the Southern Democrats. They've been using violence and fraud and subterfuge to drive down the black vote. But Republicans make the strategic decision that they too can be using race. It doesn't work so well in 1964, but by 1968, they're winning a majority of the white vote. By 1972, with Richard Nixon running against forced busing, running against integration, warning people about law and order, Richard Nixon wins 70% of the white vote in 1972. So it's really in this period, 63, 64, the strategic decision is made, and it has been working ever since. And again, to reiterate, no Democratic candidate for president has won a majority of the white vote since 1964. And fact, that is a telling fact we need to focus on. In fact, it may be forgotten, but the first time I interviewed Jackie Robinson was when he supported Richard Nixon in 1960. Richard Nixon in 1960 was politically moderate. Correct. Richard Nixon was racially moderate. Mm -hmm. Richard Nixon shifts from 1960 to 1968, because by 1968, he's learned that he can use race to win votes. And, and here, this is the way in which dog whistling really has two components. The first component is, hey, you can use race to win votes. The second component is, you can not only use it to win votes, but you can use it to create fear of a liberal activist government that supports the middle class. And that's really, that's not Richard Nixon so much, who was a moderate Republican. That's more Ronald Reagan. When Ronald Reagan starts telling stories about welfare queens, what he's saying to white voters is not just, hey, vote, you know, uh, um, uh, not just an appeal of white anxiety. He's saying, 
Minorities are a threat to your lives, but so is government, which coddles them through welfare payments taken from your taxes and which refuses to control them through lax enforcement of, of criminal uh, laws. You need to be uh, worried about minorities, but you also need to fear and resent government. And he says, here's the solution, tax cuts. And when we look at the period in which wealth inequality in our country reverses its downward trend and begins to accelerate again, that's in 1980, that's with Ronald Reagan, and it's principally a result of these massive tax cuts for the very rich that he has enacted and the Republicans since then have been pushing. Will that change when Latinos are the majority in America? I hope so, but let's be very clear, demographic change alone is not going to save us. So we should be clear, right now, half of all Latinos consider themselves white. I worry that if they're appealed to in these racial terms, if there's a new narrative that arises that says to a significant segment of Latinos, hey, you're welcome to join our party, um, uh, we're really on your side, but what you really got to worry about is uh, black folks and Muslims and those darker skinned Latinos who keep sneaking across the border and dragging you down, that we might actually see this sort of politics continue. Thanks, Ian, a fascinating book. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really a pleasure to speak with you. My pleasure. Ian Haney Lopez. The book is Dog Whistle Politics, How Coded Racial Appeals Have Reinvented Racism and Wrecked the Middle Class.